Hey brothers and sisters, the Reverend, and this is our uh, accompanying video for the uh, when to decide that you need a sound man as part of your band. What we're looking at here is an old Tapco mixer. Actually, this is the EV Tapco after uh, Tapco was bought by EV probably sometime in the 80s. Um, and pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You got your basic EQ and channel faders and a couple of boxes. Um, I mean, even this for people who don't uh, who don't do audio, um, it can be pretty intimidating. But things have changed a whole lot, and we're going to look here in just two seconds at um, uh, what my system consists of now. Back back in the day when I was mixing myself and the band, we would use a mixer like this and um, a couple of speakers on each side of the stage and a couple of power amps and uh, this had a, a reverb built into it so we weren't using any external effects we kept it really simple and uh, with the uh, 12 channels that uh, that we have here we were able to uh, to pretty much get by but uh, let's look at how much things have changed okay now before we get going too far this is not even the full system but this is the system that I would take out now um, I use this system for uh, for renting to other bands uh, when I do straight sound gigs this is also the system we use when uh, we're playing and have to uh, provide our own system um, you saw that real simple little mixer well that's been replaced by a PreSonus Studio Live 24.4.2. This is a 24 input mixer with uh, gates, comps, uh, gates, compressors, and uh, four channels of fully parametric EQ per channel. Um, uh, it's got uh, the ability to take its inputs via Firewire or via your mic input. It can also output that way and uh, you can even hook a laptop up and uh, record your performance. But as you can see, it's quite a bit more complicated than, um, than our old one. And uh, there's the back end with line ins and inserts and everything for, uh, for every channel. And uh, and even uh, the those outputs down at the bottom are, uh, are multi-outputs that, that take uh, a certain number of channels at a time, eight at a time, and then you can use those to send to a uh, to an external recorder. Okay, so that's one. Um, this is the snake that we use to uh, get sound from the stage back to the mixer. Inputs on the front of it, and a fan of XLRs on the back that go to the mixer. Another uh, big crate full of cables, that's a mess. Um, these extension cord uh, reels are what I use to store XLR cables. I generally carry three of these for a gig. Um, what else? There's another box back here. That whole box is full of AC power cable, extension cords and the like. Um, uh, this kind of... Uh, of replacement for a power strip because most commercial power strips that you can buy at the hardware store or something are pieces of crap and uh, you need something heavy duty which is what that is what else oh yeah oh, let's go to the toolbox this is uh, just some of the stuff that we need to carry with us and again this isn't any of my guitar rig or or vocal rig or anything else this is just the PA nothing else um, you know all kinds of uh, of connectors and testers and cables and adapters and I carry that with me on every gig I do. Um, the mic locker. We have our clip-on horn mics. We have a couple of other uh, we have some uh, Audix i5s here for instrument miking. Um, uh, more Audix OM2s. Um, a bunch of Heil mics which aren't in here right now because they're at my rehearsal studio. That's what we generally use. They just don't happen to be in the box right now. Um, uh, let's see what else we got to show you. Oh, back there in the back of the garage. Oh boy, the garage is a big mess, huh? But uh, you can see that's my monitor rack with uh, four in your transformers, uh, transformers, I mean transmitters. Um, I do not carry wedges 
if we need wedges I rent them um, and the power amps for them I keep everybody on in ears of course that's only four I got an eight piece band so there's more to it than that that's just one rack okay and now uh, actual speakers this is the uh, Serwin Vega active series 18 inch powered subwoofers and there are CVA 28 top boxes I have four of those top boxes you can see them stacked together on, on the top two rows of two um, uh, now this isn't including mic stands this isn't including a whole bunch of stuff um, that you just need for every gig what kind of money are we talking mixer is going to set you back about three grand um, right at depending on where you buy it that's the PA speakers over there, that's probably a $5,000, $6,000 system. So now we're up to nine. Um, and we haven't talked about mics or cables. Those in-ear um, uh, transmitters in that rack are going to run you about six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800 each. Um, and there's four of them in that rack alone. Plus your mic stands, plus your speaker stands. You're looking at a minimum investment to do this right of somewhere in the neighborhood of $10,000, minimum. So uh, there's one good reason for, uh, for hiring a sound man who has the gear. I have the gear and I still hire somebody because it's just too much for me to set up and maintain and run during a regular gig and do a good job on the gig. So um, uh, reality check, y'all. Um, people expect really good sound. It's not like it was where you used to be able, you know, when I was coming up, we ran vocals through the PA and that's how we could get away with a small mixer like this. Because all we were doing was running our vocals um, and maybe at some point in time a, a kick drum and a snare um, and maybe keyboards because the keyboard player didn't have any amp. But just a minimum amount of stuff through the mixer. The rest of the sound came off stage. That doesn't cut it anymore. You need some place where you can control the quality of the sound, the dispersion of the sound, which means putting everything through the PA, which means you need more channels, which means you need more mics, which means you need more gear, which means you need a lot more knowledge about how to run this stuff. Um, you know what the inverse square law is? That, uh, that it's a way you determine how quickly sound is going to dissipate over distance, uh, which tells you how loud it's got to be up front if you want to throw sound to the back of the room 50 feet away or 100 feet away or 200 feet away or if you want to be at a you know if you can only be at a certain level at the stage how loud can you be how loud do we be at the back you know you've got to know stuff like that if you're going to go out and try and do these kind of gigs um, so there you go this is the Reverend with an audio reality check you need a sound guy Did, you know if you're a five piece band you need to just start thinking we're a six piece band the sixth person is the sound guy. Um, I run an eight-piece band. I never go out with less than nine because I need a sound guy. Okay, um, Reverend over and out.